Now right. Let's start tracking some vocals. Let's go. Hell yeah. Let's do this. So, uh, what do I do? What do you mean, what do you do? How, how, do, how do I record you? What? Just open Pro Tools. Open Pro Tools and push record. I have no idea how to do that. Wait, you're trying to tell me that we spent all this time and money on the mic, the booth, the interface, we installed Pro Tools, we're like basically right there ready to go and we don't know how to use any of it? Correct. Oh, mother... <laughs> okay. I'm coming in there. We got to work on this together. <clears throat> that was weird. All right. Hi, guys. I'm here to teach you how to use Pro Tools. Well, like the beginner's version of it. It's, it's pretty simple, so I'm just going to run through it real quick and show you how to import audio, basically an instrumental after you've created a session, set up a track, record some vocals over it, and some little details in between to make sure that when you do it, everything runs smooth. All right, let's do this. So first thing you're going to do is obviously open Pro Tools and create a new session. First window you're going to see is your dashboard window. Up here you're going to see a section that says name. You want to want to create that title. I want to give it something good, something that helps, you know, give you a feel for what the project is. I'm going to give it a fun name. Let's call it How to Boogaloo. I don't know if that's how you spell boogaloo, but that's what it is. I could have been how to record, but <laughs> where's the fun in that? I'm going to make sure that local storage is selected. And then underneath, you're going to see a couple of sections. One says file type, sample rate, bit depth, and input output settings. I go with wave format for the file type. Sample rate, the pretty standard option here is 48. You can go 44.1. That's what most of the files that you render out or bounce down for different digital distribution platforms is going to be at. But 48 is a pretty good sweet spot and pretty much the most common and then for bit depth you want to go for 24 bit make sure that you get all that dynamic range in the audio that you're recording and for the input output settings stereo mix in my case it was last used but stereo mix and then click location here select where on your hard drive you want to save this entire session all the audio files and everything that you're going to be using for the pro tool session itself and then click create and here we are ah look at that the ever so familiar beautiful edit window. So this is the edit window of Pro Tools. I know it looks a bit daunting. If you're not familiar with it, uh, it's a lot. It's lines and dashes, giant blank spaces, numbers, all kinds of crap going on, but it's not it's not as crazy as it seems. So we're going to break it down, just the, the parts that you need to know, and then the rest of it, don't worry about it. Well, it's a different video, or maybe from someone else who knows more than I do, but I know just enough to get you through this section, so that's what we're going to do. The other window as well, so you know, is the mix window. You can see that here by clicking window, Mix. I know. How creative. But this is the mix window and you'll find different faders and input settings and stuff once you've created some tracks here. You can also access this window with the command of hotkey equals. You can see me going back and forth like a madman. But yeah, that's that. I'm end up crashing this whole thing. Uh, so the first thing you want to do before you start importing audio or creating new tracks is head on up to setup, click playback engine. And you want to adjust your buffer size. When you're recording audio, it's good to keep your buffer size at 256 to 128 samples uh, so that you reduce the amount of latency in the recording. What latency is, for those of you who aren't familiar, is the amount of time it takes from my face to make noise into this microphone, the noise to go through the computer, through Pro Tools, whatever processing you have set up, and pump it back out into the headphones that you're usually wearing or the speakers or whatever. Um, when you're when you're experiencing high latency, there's a delay. It's basically lag like in a video game. Uh, except it's your face making noises and then you hearing it just after the fact, which can be really frustrating when you're trying to record vocals and even detrimental when you're trying to do things that are pretty precise or require perfect timing on the track. So you want to keep your uh, latency as low as possible and reducing the buffer size helps with that. Once you get into mixing the audio, then you can jack the buffer size back up. Uh, but for the time being, we're going to keep it at 128 samples. The next thing you want to do is head up to File, Import, audio and this is where we're going to bring in our audio track for the session in this case i'm working with an instrumental that was pre-made so you're going to find it in the finder i know <laughs> who saw that coming you're going to select it uh, and then you're going to see a little section down here that says add or convert um, you might also see instead of convert it says copy but you want to stick with convert or copy uh, the reason being is that this is going to take the audio file from wherever it is in your computer and generate a new copy of it that is set for your session and save it with all the other files in the same session. That's just a smart way to do it, save you some hassle down the road. Click open, 
It's going to tell you to save. You want to keep it with everything else. In this case, the audio files folder, which is the default folder for everything that you record or import into your Pro Tools session. Once that's done processing, you're going to see another section pop up here. It says new track or clip list. Clip list is if you don't want to make it in the session, uh, you don't want the thing that you're importing to appear in the session, it'll show up in the clip list. That's a little bit more advanced. We don't need that for right now. We're going to click new track and click Okay, and here we go. Bam, that's our instrumental track. Look at that. Look at that sexy waveform just sitting there. Now, you'll notice the waveform is tall and pretty close to the edges on top and bottom. And that's because this thing has been processed to all hell so that it slaps. And it does indeed slap. Most producers will put some mastering plugins and whatnot to try and maximize as much as they can and get all the all the sweet, sweet volume and bass thumping goodness they can out of the track when they render it out. The problem is once you bounce it uh, and it's this hot, it's not really ideal for recording with in this session. So you're going to want to make the adjustment of dropping it down to preferably about negative 6 dB. Now there's two ways to do this. One is by using the fader here on volume and you can drop it down to negative six. Now you also notice when you're moving around the fader, it's kind of jumpy. It's, it takes bigger chunks. If you want to make micro adjustments to a fader in Pro Tools, just hold down command and move it and you'll get those 0.1 adjustments. So we'll set it to negative six. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it is using clip gain. Clip gain is this little fader on the bottom left corner of any of the individual clips that you'll see in a session. And we're going to drop it down here. This is my preferred method of reducing the volume of the instrumental because this way, any adjustments I make to the volume fader later, any automation or anything is not affected. I don't have to worry about it down the line. This is just always going to be at that slightly less blow your eardrums out volume that I originally set it to, which is again, perfect for this session. And you can see where this is sitting by going back to the mix window playing it back and watching the meter here. You kind of want this to sit in this general area, a little over 0.5. We're sitting a touch low right now, so we'll go back and adjust this up. Check it back. And this is nice. That's sitting in a nice sweet spot. I always like the real simple way, honestly, for me is to just look at it and make sure that the peaks of the audio are hitting the bottom of the yellow in the meter. I know that's really simplistic way of doing it, but that's what works for me, and that's what I'm passing along to you. So that's the track right there. It's ready to go. Now, for some reason, in a lot of the other tutorials I've watched, they've kind of skipped over a really important little step. For me, that's setting the tempo of the session. And a lot of the times when you get an instrumental from a producer, you'll see the tempo is it's literally written in the file name. Sometimes uh, the key of the song is as well. In this case, it's at 100 BPM is what I set that instrumental to. Now you'll see the transporter, which is this little floating window with all these controls on it up top here and a tempo and meter section. If for some reason that's not appearing, uh, click the little drop down arrow on the top right of the transport and make sure expanded transport is clicked here. And that'll give you this option. So you'll see tempo. And this is the easiest way to adjust the tempo. You just tap on the number there, click, click. Click, boom, and we're setting it to 100 and enter. Boom, now our entire session is set to 100 BPM. So now that we have our tempo set, our buffer size set, our instrumental is imported and the clip gain is set and we're all ready to rock, how do we add a vocal? Well, that's real easy. You need a new audio track and the easiest way to create a new audio track is by going track up in the top menu and clicking new. I know, what a novel concept. And you'll see here a few options, uh, mono, audio track, drop down menus. Uh, just keep it on mono. Your microphone is recording in a single individual track. It's not recording in stereo. So straight through the mono track. Um, audio track is what we're gonna select here. Samples is fine. And then I like to name these things as well so that when you keep adding tracks to the side, they don't become too difficult to keep track of. So we're gonna call this vocal one goodness. And you'll see here, the new track has been created just underneath our instrumental track that says Vocal One Goodness. Now, you can't just jump right into recording yet. You're almost there though, I promise. Just a couple more steps left. So the first thing you need to do is make sure that your input is set correctly. In this case, you're going to click above line, which is your output. You're gonna select interface and then choose which input your microphone is plugged into in the interface you're using for Pro Tools. In my case, it's mic one. And then you want to click this little bad boy over here, which is the record enabled button arming the track. The track is now armed, so don't piss it off. It's dangerous, probably. All right. So, <laughs> so now the track is armed. We have our volume coming through. You can see this sweet, sweet audio track is getting some juice. It's got some life in there. Look at that. Uh, you can't just go. You can't just start ripping right now because you need to make sure that the input gain is set properly. 
best way to do that is to head back on over to the mixed window and take a look at the meter. And you want to keep it again somewhere around, see it as negative five. You want to keep it somewhere around negative 60 B when you are performing. That should be the peak. You really shouldn't jump beyond that point much. If you do, then you need to lower the gain. For me, I use an Apogee Duet, which gives me this little bad boy here, and I can make the adjustments on this fader, this little dial. So I'll set it about 55 or so, so that when I get loud, it doesn't peak or clip and go over this little sweet spot in the, in the bottom of the yellow. Then you wanna arm the track by clicking record enable, this little button on the left side here. You might have your record button set to normal. Once you've clicked record up here and you have a track arm, just pressing spacebar will cause a new track to be generated as you can see here. Waveform looking pretty good. That's how you actually just track anything, vocals, maracas, tiny little stress balls, whatever you're feeling, you know? It's all, it's all good to me, I don't judge. And that's it, that's how to record in Pro Tools for beginners. If you like what you learned here, again, please be sure to like and subscribe. If there's anything that I didn't get to or anything that wasn't super clear, please just drop me a line down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. I am not uh, like a super professional mixing engineer by any stretch of the imagination. I just kinda know what I'm doing and I'm sharing it with you. So I hope you guys appreciate uh, the little bit of knowledge that I have to give. Um, and if there's anything else that I can give in this space, I will do so here at a later date, but not now, because this video is over. All right, end it. Hello? Where the hell am I? I'm sitting at the, I'm sitting at the computer a second ago. And it's so weird. Uh, hello?